There's a wonderful story in the Gospel of Mark. It's a story of Jesus feeding the 5,000. And the disciples are exhausted. They're overwhelmed with the needs of the people. And they realize the people have nothing to eat. And so they go to Jesus and they say, please send them away. Jesus said, what do you have? You feed them. They found five loaves and two fish. They gave them to Jesus and he broke it and he multiplied it. And then he said something very interesting. He said, seat the people on the patches of green grass. That phrase has always struck me. Why the green grass? What is the significance of green grass? Throughout scripture, green grass, whether it be in Isaiah or Psalm 23, uh, symbolizes the inbreaking kingdom of God. The green grass got me to thinking about a story of my first visit to Swaziland. We were there with a church group to help work at a clinic and a church and a school. We went to a mission site called Sitsatsawani on the, one of the most remote parts of Swaziland. The, there was no water for a community of 12,000 people. Their fields were dry, they had no crops, their livestock were dying, and, and uh, it, it was just a very broken place. And we were there trying to do what we could and we were offering what we had. And a, a man that was with us by the name of Fred Evans said, Pastor David, I see a water well across the way. Can I go look at that? And he went and, and checked out that water well. It had been broken down and had not worked for years. And he came back and he said, I believe there's water there. And so I remember the time when as a group we stood together, we held hands and we prayed around that water well and we said, God, we're bringing you what we have, as little as it is. Do something extraordinary here. Fred went home and he developed a solar panel water well system that he uniquely made. And he said, Pastor, we can do this for $25,000. We instantly raised the money and we went back and we installed the very first solar paneled water well in Swaziland. One year later, I went back to that place. They said, we want you to go back and see what God has done in Sitsatsawani. And so I did. I couldn't believe my eyes. There were, uh, was green in all of the pastures. All of the fields were full of crops. Uh, the livestock were back again. There were children running and laughing and playing. And there were hundreds of people there to greet us. The first thing they said to me when I got out of the van was, where is Evans? We want him to see what has happened here. And as I looked at what that fresh water had done in that, in that place that was so broken and so dry and decimated, and I saw new life, and I looked around, and there by the nurse's station was green grass. God's kingdom was breaking in in that moment. But the story isn't over because the Coca-Cola Foundation found out about that project. They found out about Fred's unique uh, design. They said, can we buy that? And Coca-Cola Foundation committed $1 million to a water project throughout all of Swaziland we said, we want you to start with the 17th Nazarene Clinics. And for the first time, the Nazarene Clinics in Swaziland had fresh running water. Why did that happen? That happened because a man named Fred, a Nazarene in a church in Oklahoma said, Lord, I give you what I have. It's not much compared to the need, but if you'll take what I have and you'll multiply it in your hands, a miracle can happen and thousands of people are affected by that. We praise God for what you are doing through your World Evangelism Fund. Every time you pray, every time you give, every time you, you go, lives are being changed. We do this together. We sometimes don't tell you thank you enough, but today on behalf of a global church where God is working in miraculous ways, we say thank you for giving what you have you may think it's very little, but in the end, placed in the hands of Jesus, it's changing the world.